I'm surprised that they are biblical scholars, and they are uh, people who uh, do not believe in a millennial reign. Six times, six, that many, that many times, the Bible talks about the word millennium and uses the word millennium, okay? And uh, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, you just read it in the Bible. Just read what it has to say, you know. And uh, some people don't do, some people don't. But that, that's their problem. That's, that's their situation, okay? So I'm going to talk with you about um, the, the millennial reign of Jesus Christ today. Now let me say something about this millennial reign. It's a wonderful time for the world. Um, there'll be good people, and there'll be some people that, are, that, are, that will be born during that thousand years that uh, are not so good, okay? And when Satan is loosed out of the uh, bottomless pit, he will appeal to those people that are not so good, okay? And uh, he will lead a the end of rebellion, and Jesus will put it down. And uh, But anyhow, then of course there's going to be the final um, judgment, and then, uh, you know, it we're going to, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. All right, in chapter 20, verse uh, 1 through 7, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the, on the dragon, that old servant, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's one, one mention. And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him. By the way, I think the bottomless pit is God's jailhouse. <laughs> Sometimes you have to put people in the jailhouse to do, do what, get them to do what's right. Of course, you ain't going to ever get the devil to do what's right. And cast him into a bottomless pit and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be finished. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not, and had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him, and here it is again, a thousand years. And when the thousand years, this is the sixth time, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. I'll quit reading there, because you can read it for yourself. Uh, Revelation. But the book of the Revelation, by the way, it's a good book. It's, uh, it's not as complicated as a lot of people make it out to be. But anyhow, you can read the book of the Revelation. There's a great blessing connected with the, the book of the Revelation. Particularly that uh, television preachers right now are really, really focusing upon the book of the Revelation because of the end time prophecies and so forth. Uh, some of the great preachers of, uh, of the, of, on the television are doing the same thing. I like to watch them, I like to listen to them, and all those kinds of things, and I'm sure that you do too. But I want to talk with you about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ today. Christ shall reign on this, uh, on this earth for a thousand years. Let me say that again. Christ shall reign on this earth for 1,000 years. I know some free will Baptists don't believe that. Some people, some are all millennials. They don't believe they're going to be a millennial reign. But I'm a, I'm a premillennialist. Uh, I guess free will Baptists on the East, on the west side of the Mississippi, 
they're more all millennial. And on the east side of the, now there are pockets in North Carolina, and some some few others that, that believe in a um, um, in all millennial, <coughs> millennialism, but uh, we uh, believe in a pre-millennial government uh, reign, if you will, of a thousand years. The word millennial is used six different times in the Bible. This is the answer to the Christian's prayer, thy kingdom come. And we say it every time we say the Lord's prayer, Lord, thy kingdom come. By the way, when we pray the Lord's prayer, we're praying for this time to come. We're praying for this particular time and following to come. And I'm going to talk with you about the following next week, okay? Lord, you, you need to know, you as Christians need to know where this world is headed, where we are headed, and what God, is, Jesus Christ is going to do, and what God the Father is going to do. We need to know that, and he has revealed that in his book. He has told us exactly what is going to be taking place. And it says, uh, let's see, several books in the Bible, uh, in, in in the, in the Bible prophesy of this kingdom. For example, Daniel, the great prophet of the captivity, prophesied that there would be four great Gentile kingdoms, and there have only been four. Now, there have been other kingdoms, there have other been, but not world kingdoms like, like these four. Babylon, and they were the top. Persia, which is called Iran today. Greece, under Alexander the Great, and Rome, and all four of these kingdoms, by the way, each one added to the other. Uh, some great historians, I mean great historians, have shown how that, that the Babylonian law, the Persian law, the Greek law, and the Roman law has still, uh, as, as, a part of, as a part of our world today. But anyhow, he also prophesied that they would be, be destroyed by the stone kingdom from God. Read it in the book of Daniel, by the way. Uh, it's a, it's a, Daniel is a wonderful prophet. The first part of the book is when Daniel was a, was a particularly young man. The latter part of the book is when he's a particularly, particularly older, older man. And he's much, much older toward the latter part of that book. But he's a great man indeed. That they would be stoned, that they would be destroyed by the stone kingdom from God. This millennial kingdom is that stone bit kingdom. Other prophets also wrote of this kingdom. Isaiah wrote of it. Ezekiel wrote of it. The apostle Paul wrote of it. Other prophets, uh, Daniel wrote of it. And I could go on to other prophets as well. This kingdom and its glorious times will include Jesus Christ and all of his people, both Jew and Gentile. Now, most of, uh, I think all of us here this morning are Gentile people. We're having a real time right now with the Jewish people and the Gentile people of the world. The Jewish people are doing what they know to be right. Um, there are women uh, on October 7th this past year uh, the women and the children were, I mean, it, over a thousand young people, were, a thousand people were killed. Uh, several women were raped. I mean, children were burned alive and chopped off their heads and all that kind of stuff. And I don't understand. I do not understand to, to right now, this morning, I do not understand why young people uh, at Harvard and Yale and Brown and all those Top uh, universities in this country are so far so so uh, much behind Hamas. I just don't understand it at all. It's got to be a satanic movement at all uh, 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 dealing with all of that. But anyhow, let's talk about the form of government. What kind of government is it going to be? Now, there's a worldwide government under Antichrist, and we know that he's going to be. He, it's, go, it's going to be a bad kingdom. It's going to be a bad form of government. But God, Jesus Christ is going to come, and he is going to set up a theocracy. God himself, now that's what a theocracy is, by the way. A theocracy is God ruling the world. 
He God himself will rule through the person of Jesus Christ. That Bible said, plainly says that all judgment, all rulership, if you will, has been given into the hands of Jesus Christ's Son. Ezekiel describes the building, especially the grand temple, in his writings in Ezekiel 41 through 43. That's a confusing time. I, I do not know much about that. It, it really is a hard time. By the way, the first part of Ezekiel was the wheels within the wheels and all that stuff. I don't understand that. I just, I just read it, you know. I'm sort of, I'm sort of like my, my wife's uh, grandmother. She was, she, was, she was not a well-educated person. She would read her Bible every day, and if she would get the hard words, she would read up to that hard word, then she, and when she started reading back again, she would go past the hard word <laughs> and read some more, you know. And, and, and a, a lot, hey, listen, there have been some preachers that, that way. I remember that preacher one time. He couldn't read. His daughter, he would take his daughter with him everywhere, and his daughter would read the Bible. And of course, he, would, he, he, he quoted a lot of Scripture, that this, this man there. But he, he was a good preacher. But nonetheless, a good Christian fellow. But anyhow, uh, Jesus Christ himself will rule through the... Uh, God, uh, God himself will rule through the person of Jesus Christ. King David, and, I, and again, I don't understand a whole lot of the book of, of Ezekiel. I really don't. But I know it's true because that was a prophet of God. Uh, let's see, there was Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Those four prophets are the major prophets. The rest of the prophets are minor prophets, if you will. But they're, they're still prophets. But anyhow, King David will be his regent and will be called the prince. Now, that's a very confusing situation. King David was promised by God that he would have a literal kingdom, a literal throne to, to sit on for eternity, if you will. And this is a fulfillment of that. You read it, just read the book of, I know you're not going to understand the book of Ezekiel, but you can read the book of Ezekiel. And it will tell you a lot about what's going on or what will be going on. King David will be the regent. Um, Jesus Christ, and will be called the Prince. Let's talk about the seat of the government. Where will it be? Where will it be, uh, take place? Jerusalem, the city, is where it will, be, will take place, right outside the city of Jerusalem. This temple is going to be built. This building is going to be built. And it, it, it is a beautiful temple indeed. Uh, I was reading several years ago, and I was reading, it, I think, even a while back, uh, the, the, the person that was writing about it was a great scholar, and he said that uh, the, um, the building that, that uh, Ezekiel describes is a very beautiful building. There's never been a building like that before, and I'll say more about that later as we move along. But Jerusalem is going to be the city. By the way, I said it before, and let me say it again. God did not choose New York. He did not choose Washington, D.C., he did not choose Chicago. He did not choose Los Angeles. He chose the city of uh, the city of, of Jerusalem, if you will. So, anyhow, that's this where the seat of the government is going to be. Jesus Christ is going to rule from a from a throne there. The Jews are going to help him do that. We are going to be a part of that as well. And I hope that hope we don't give me Chicago. Oh Lord, that's a mess. Chicago, Chicago is a mess. <laughs> don't don't give me some, don't don't give me that city straightened out. Give that to uh, give it to the brother. <laughs> okay, don't give it to me. But anyhow, Jerusalem is the city of the seat of it of the government. Ezekiel describes the building, especially the Grand Temple, in his writings in Ezekiel forty-one to forty-three. Ezekiel does a lot of writings. Ezekiel was a, he was a prophet in Babylon, if you will, when, when the people of Israel was, was uh, being punished by the Lord. He writes of a man with a measuring reed or a measuring rod, if you will. And the man it gives exact proportions of the different parts of that, that, that temple, if you will. <coughs> He 
describes a future temple that has never been built, but will be during the millennial reign or, or the thousand years. A thousand years is a long time, folks. I mean a real long time, okay? But anyhow, he describes a future temple that has never been built, but will be during the millennial reign of, Je of Jesus Christ. He writes of the memorial offers. Now, this is another confusing thing about the book of Ezekiel. He writes of the memorial offerings. I think that, that, that has more to do with the matter of uh, um, uh, memorials than offerings itself. But anyhow, he writes of the memorial offerings. He writes of the gate for the prince, or David, if you will. He writes about that. He writes of the Lord's portion of the land. Now, I wish I had a, had a, a blackboard or a whiteboard or whatever it was to show you something about it. But anyhow, the, in the very middle of that nation, Jesus Christ had, has a, a place to, that, that he's going to build that temple. And he's going to rule and he's going to reign with a, a rod of iron from that uh, temple, if you will, in the, in the middle of that particular country. But anyhow, he writes of the gate for the prince. He writes for the Lord's portion uh, of the land. He writes of the worship of Christ by the prince and the people, and we will worship him. We will worship God. We will worship Jesus Christ, and that will be a part of that glorious, glorious age uh, called the millennial age, age, if you will. He writes of the vision of the land among the tribes of Israel. Each, the, Israel has never, rec, never claimed all of the land that God gave Abraham. It, they, they've never, they've, they have claimed a lot of it, but a lot of it they, they don't. Right now, today, I think I've already told you this, but let me tell you this again. Right now, they have only a small portion of the land that God gave Abraham. God gave Abraham from the, the river of Egypt, and I'll explain that in just a minute, from the river of Egypt all the way to the Euphrates. That's what God gave to, uh, to, the, to uh, um, Moses, if you will. And he said, that, that's going to be your land. And in the middle of that land is where Jesus Christ is going to rule and, 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 right, and reign. He writes of the lordship of, G of Christ uh, by the prince and the people. He writes of the vision of the land among the tribes of Israel. He writes of the royal grant that goes from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates that was given to Moses and his people. Now the river of Egypt is not the, in the Bible is not the Nile. The Nile is Egypt. If, if, if you're an Egyptian, the Nile, is, it, that's, that's what makes you who, who you are. There is another river between Israel and uh, Egypt. There's a, the river of Egypt, if you will. From that river all the way to the Euphrates River, that's, that's going to be the, the land grant, if you will. And that, that is the land grant. But nonetheless, he writes of the royal grant that goes from the river of Egypt to the river Euphrates that was given to Moses and given to Moses and his people. He writes of a holy oblation, <coughs> oblation set aside for Christ in the center of that holy land. He was in the very center indeed. The temple, let's talk about the temple and its worship, if you will. It's going to be a different time. It's going to be a different uh, place. It's going to be worship. Worship is worship. But uh, it's going to be a different time. So no such building as Ezekiel as Ezekiel uh, lays out has ever been built. Now, they've been a beautiful temple of, of David. David drew it up. Solomon built it and all of that. It was a very beautiful building. Herod had a very beautiful building. Herod uh, it was 40, 40 something years, I believe, in building that, that particular temple that was torn down by the Romans uh, in 70 AD. Uh, but nonetheless, um, we, we see, see that no, no building such as Ezekiel describes in his writings lay, uh, lays out, layout has ever been built. 
the Aaronic priesthood will be reestablished. Aaron was the was the leading priest, if you will, and, and the priesthood uh, all down through the centuries of, of, of Israel has been the, the, the descendants of Aaron or the Aaronic priesthood. Now, I know this is getting a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, confusing. Keep these notes, if you will. Okay, I worked hard on these notes, so you keep you keep them. All right, and uh, if you need any, any help, let me know. Uh, our sister this week, she asked me last week to, to, to help her to, to understand something about the angels and the cherubim and the seraphim and all that. And so this week I help try to try to help her out. If I don't help you now, help you out. If you if you don't answer all your questions, give it. Just tell me, say, okay, call me or something. I'll work on it for you. All right, because I want you to understand. I want you to know. I'm like the Apostle Paul. Six times he said, he, he, he said he did not want people to be, his people to be ignorant, if you will. And I don't want you to be ignorant. But anyhow, the, the Aaronic priesthood will be reestablished. They're not, in, they're not uh, sacrificing today, but they will. The sacrifices of the priests will be a memorial of what Christ has done for mankind. And then the knowledge of the Lord, Isaiah says this, the knowledge of the Lord will be worldwide. I'm going to read that in just a little bit. But uh, I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and read that now out of Isaiah. Because it is a beautiful, beautiful portion of Scripture. Isaiah chapter, eight, let's say chapter 11, I believe it is. Hold on just a minute. Isaiah chapter 11. Okay, here we go. And there shall come, now this, this is Isaiah writing, okay? And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of, out, out of his roots. That's no one, none other than Jesus Christ. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, uh, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a leader like that? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a leader that, like Isaiah is, 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 uh, is describing here? Biden don't know hardly where he's at at, at, at any, any particular time, but... Uh, Jesus Christ will know. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Note that. It's going to be a righteous judgment. What is a righteous judgment? A righteous judgment means it's going to be right. It's going to be the, the, the right thing. It's not going to be... Uh, uh, I think I've told you about this before. Don't go to Darlington, and they built, they've built they just built a several million dollar courthouse that, uh, in Darlington. Don't go there looking for looking for justice. You might get a little bit. You may not get a little bit. But that's but but, but when you when when Jesus Christ rules reigns, it's going to be justice, justice, and justice. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf, now notice this, this is what's going to happen. Says, he says, and the wolf shall also dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall leave them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. By the way, it's going to be the cow and the bear. It's not going to be the cat, the cow inside the bear. It's going to be the cow and the bear. Okay. All right. And the young ones shall lie down together, and the ox shall eat straw like the... Uh, uh, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, 
and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. Now the asp was a small snake, uh, snake that was very, and it is very poisonous in Africa. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. That's another, that's a much larger snake, but it's still a poisonous snake. Children are going to play with the snakes. They're going to play on the cockatrice's den. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an innocent, and the people to, and, and of the people to it shall the Gentiles see, and the rest shall be glorious. Oh, I'm, I'm one of one of these days, and I think I said it last week that if if all I'm going to get by being a Christian, and I'm a Christian, if all I'm going to get is a thousand years reign of Jesus on this earth, give me that. That would be better than going to a place called hell, I'll tell you that. But, I, but that's, that's just going to be the start. Uh, I, I'm going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ throughout e a thousand years and throughout eternity, if you will. The sacrifices will, will be a memorial of what Christ has done. The knowledge of the Lord will be worldwide. Let's talk about the character of the millennial for just a little bit. Jesus will rule and reign with an iron hand. He is going to rule. Let me say that again. What he, what he says is right, and he is going to make sure it is done right, if you will. Jesus will rule and reign with an iron hand. Satan will be removed during the millennium. Mankind has never known what the world will be like without the influence of Satan. Think about that. There will be no one that during that uh, reign to stir up hatred or in, engender strife. That's why he's going to be loosed a little season and many will follow him. Many will not. I'm not going to follow him. And I think, don't think you're going to follow him either. But there will be universal peace during that time. Many shall beat their weapons into plows, plows and their spears into pruning hooks. We uh, Peggy and I, several years ago, we went out to Tennessee, and we saw where the first nuclear uh, reactors was. We went in to, to see them. And on the outside of that building that it, it was in, that, that verse of Scripture said, Men shall, uh, shall uh, uh, beat the plows in this, uh, uh, the swords into plows, and their spears into pruning hooks. Think about that for a minute. Think about all these billions and trillions of dollars that are put into tanks and guns and explosives and research to, to kill people and all those kinds. You think about all of that being done to help people, to, 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 to feed people and, and all the rest. It's going to be a wonderful time indeed this thousand year reign. There will be universal peace during this time. Men shall beat their weapons. Satan will be released for a little season, as the Bible says, to test the people who are born during this time. There will be one final rebellion, and that will be put down by Jesus Christ himself. Then Satan himself will be cast into the lake of fire with the Antichrist and the false prophet and be there forevermore. I believe there's a place called hell. I think you believe in a place called hell. And I think it's a permanent place. We're going to see more about that next week at the beginning of, of the time. Isaiah writes that there will be changes in the animal kingdom in Isaiah chapter 11. Let me, uh, let me let, let's see, we, we've got about five minutes left. I'm, I'm just going to read from my notes. Isaiah writes that there will be changes in the an animal kingdom. That will be Isaiah chapter 11. The wolf shall lay down with the lamb. The lion shall lay down with the kid, or the goat, if you will. The calf and the young lion shall dwell together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. The weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. One of these days, it's going to be a wonderful time indeed. 
on this earth. Isaiah also writes that a human life, and listen, listen and that Isaiah is writing again about this. Isaiah also writes that human life will be prolonged. The child shall die a hundred years old. <laughs> if you're a hundred, if, if you die during the millennial reign, I mean, a hundred. If you're a hundred years old, and I'm eighty-two, eighty-two now, uh, I'm not a child at, at, by any stretch. But that's that's what I'll be called in that time if I if I pass away. A person dying at one hundred years shall be considered a child. A man considered. Uh, a man to be considered a man will live several hundred years. Think about that now. Men and women will live as long as they did before the flood. People ask me all the time, are those numbers right? Yes, they were right. We didn't have some of the pollution. We didn't have some of the uh, stuff in the, in the ground. We didn't have a whole lot of things taking place in that time. But uh, nonetheless, yes, I, I believe it. It, it, uh, Adam lived 930 years, He's, and I could go on about that. And I'm going to live a long time, and you're going to live a long time. I'm going to live throughout eternity. You're going to live throughout eternity. Men and women will live as long as they did before the flood. The conclusion to all this, and by the way, there's a whole lot more I could have said, but I, I wanted to give you just something of what's going to take place in the future. This will be a most wonderful time for the people of God. All of this will come about because of Jesus and what he did on the cross for us. Oh, Jesus, how wonderful he is. He will be the leading character as the age draws to a close. Yes, Satan will be loosed, as we have said before. He will convince a great multitude to follow him in his will. But then Christ will cast him into the lake of fire with Antichrist and the false prophet. Will the will of God ever be done? You bet it will. God is going to make sure that his will is going to be done. And the last two chapters of Revelation tells us of a glorious eternity. What is eternity? That's, it goes forever. By the way, eternity goes both ways. It goes in the past as far as it as far as our little minds, our, our minds will, will understand, and it goes into the future, as long as it's understand. But anyhow, uh, the last two chapters of Revelation tells us of a glorious eternity with him. I trust this has helped you to understand a little bit more of the millennial kingdom, and I hope that it, that it, it you know, is a blessing uh, to all of you Christians this morning. I pray that, Lord, that you bless us and use us today. Help us to help people to be saved. Oh, we pray so hard for people. We pray every day for people to be saved. Some of my people, some of the people here at this church, some of the other people, oh, Lord, how we pray that people might be saved. We don't want anybody to be lost. What the nurse this week, as she was taking our blood pressure and asking us questions and all that, she was talking about this. And hell, heaven won't be heaven unless you wipe away our tears. So I pray that you'd help us to be a blessing to others, help us to help people be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're free to go in the fear of the Lord.